tell us about your badge. I'm this badge here. Can you explain to us what it, that badge it, is? It's a crocodile and it says on it, right, save our children from paedophiles. So it's a prohibited okay. area going through the crocodile and it's, the crocodile is the paedophile. Okay, why crocodile? A bit like Peter Pan with the crocodile and the clock, you know. Well, the crocodile takes human beings, I suppose. So it will take human beings. I don't know what these, there, there is symbol. I think there is um, some ancient art with crocodiles and children in the mouth. Yeah. Or crocodiles. Yeah. It does so, say, say it could be because Peter Pan is all about, let's face it, it's all about the lost boys and, you know, stuff that really, a lot of the time these stories are really hiding nefarious things. I, I, I've just sent a letter to Melanie Shaw Peter this Pan week. With, uh, Captain Hook and the Crocodile. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I've just written to Melanie Shaw this week. So I keep, and I wrote to Carol Woods when Carol Woods was in the orchards. I went up to the orchards to support her. I've been to Nottingham several occasions and I've been all over the country. Went to Sunderland a few weeks ago uh, and I went there to support other survivors and uh, did a bit of filming and interviewing myself. And that's the kind of thing I do. And I say, I'm interviewing um, survivors now. Um, and it's strange because people are saying to me, although I'm not um, my grammar, my spelling, um, my, I don't know, my articulation is not brilliant i can manage to i have like a second sight when i'm talking to a victim i can listen and i can take it in and i can feel and i, I get a kind of like second sight and it's strange but it works it's true alan you, you we have empathy you have to have gone through something like this to be able to get that person to trust you to be able to connect to, to in a certain way because um, there are triggers, there are trigger words. You know, um, when me and my husband went to counseling together and I explained to him what my triggers are. And, and then he learns, he learns and he's able to understand. But people that haven't gone through this, they don't understand that you've got to, everyone is very, very vulnerable. And that's why I'm doing my best here to listen and to try and use my intuition on what questions to ask you. You know, but you're very brave. You're telling us everything. And, but the biggest message that has to go out here is children are not safe. If you're a parent and you're struggling with your child, just, I wouldn't, I wouldn't call social services now. I think just, just keep your child safe and, learn how to heal your child yourself you know there's a huge amount do you agree with me that I, I actually trust anyone agree with you. your children 100 percent agree with you they're uh, not fit for purpose absolutely not fit for purpose shouldn't be in existence shouldn't we we're very wrong in this country today for politicians to not even re i've been in the home office with my uh, member of parliament I got a tour of Westminster by my member of parliament and she promised she would do so much to help us. Um, What's her name? Victoria Atkins, MP. Victoria Atkins, MP, okay. For Hall, uh, La uh, she's a, a minister, in, she's actually a safeguarding minister in the Homewoods, based in the Homewoods. But she's uh, Louth and Horncastle uh, MP. And... Uh, yeah, Victoria Atkins. And I think her father was a politician. That's how she got into politics. Is she helping you, Alan? When I went and spoke to her in her office, there was like the tissues and a PA. Um, I don't know if it's a palm lint. I don't mean they're personal assistants. I think they're more palm lintry assistants than personal assistants nowadays because they have to know so much about politics to probably be in it. She was in tears, Rachel. And I get on with her, she's got my own personal number, and I speak to her. I gave uh, Victoria Atkins, presented to Victoria Atkins, the Beach Home, in, Beach Home Interim Report. And I'm in that report, and it's got me down as AM. And it's, uh, it's on the internet uh, by Kathy Fox. 
a blog by Kathy Fox, uh, the Beach Home Interim Report, and inside it, it names me. And I write in my own book about what happened to me. Okay. Uh, and people are, are saying to me, it's brilliant. You've got to carry it through. I ask you again, is Victoria Atkins actually helping you, do you feel? Or is she avoiding the issue as usual? I think the latter. She's avoiding the issue. Avoiding the issue. Well, you see, this is the problem. The whole system is owned, as we know. These people, they're all connected, as we're highlighting all the time. We're highlighting it. So you have your own show. Uh, your own podcast is that right? That you well, it's, uh, it's 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 on YouTube, but it's Wake Up UK. Wake Up UK, okay. It, um, it's Wake Up UK, okay. and then you, 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 I do uh, do it every week. I have guests that I bring on every week. I I did the first very first show I did. I did with John because I've been campaigning with John, and I wanted John on, and I wanted other beach home survivors on as well. Um, and, and I work close with other survivors. Um, from various walks of life and from various parts of the country, um, we were growing in strength. We, I, we were organising a demonstration for the 16th of May in. Um, okay. Oh May, yes. In, it just gone by, um, and we was asked to cancel it because of COVID. Now, we're getting so big, it's unbelievable. But and I've, I've got into so many groups, like Harold Woods Group, the Melanie Shore Group, um, Tommy Robinson. And, and, and people like that. Oh, I've got to know a lot of people and the Sikh Alliance Society, uh, the veterans, uh, Rolling Thunder and a few others um, were going to join us for the 16th of May. Um, and some of Tommy Robinson supporters were joining us as well. And we tried to do everything by the book and book Parliament Square. And it was just like... Um, a brick wall was put up in all the time that yeah. they said to me, oh, well, you can't just go and have a demonstration on Parliament Square. You've got to ask permission. You've got and to go through. people can protest if and when, as we know, uh, if, the, if it's convenient. Then yeah. you know, Black Lives Matter. We know. And all of this was very convenient. All of this COVID stuff. Well, as well, well said. Picking up. It's so convenient, isn't it? Without me actually going into that and Stop. saying that earlier on, yes. Very, very well said. And... Uh, I didn't want to say that, and this is what I said. See, look, I have a look on this where I don't think colour comes into it at all. Because if you go back donkey's years, the first slaves were white slaves anyway. White slaves were being sold off donkey's years ago, before, before we, can, we can go back a long, long time in history. So the people have got their facts wrong. If you look up the word in the dictionary black and you look up the dictionary white, I think you will find you'll quite be, you'll be surprised by the actual wording of the matter and how it's worded or uh, broken down into. And the fact is, at the end of the day, we all bleed the same colour. There's no there's no colour code in blood, mm. and we all bleed the same colour. So to me, we're all the same. You know, I, I have no prejudice. Mm. Um, I just don't. I just think. Uh, what, what annoys me more than anything that if you go back in time, if you, we took our interim report to uh, Theresa May at Dan, 10 Downing Street. She cast it aside. We well, found out since that Herbert Brazier, her father, was a child abuser. Oh, yeah. And I mean, he goes back to the times of Clement Attlee. So you're going back to the 30s and 40s. So child abuse has been going on for donkey's years. And when there's politicians involved in it, there was, at one stage, I found the information out there was 140,000 indecent images found on electronic devices and laptops in the houses of the, um, in the Westminster, in the Palace of Westminster. Mm -hmm. Now, that's Parliament. Yeah. 140,000. These people are there to protect our children. These people are implicit in everything that's gone on in all these grooming gangs. And we've got to the stage now that we can't trust social services, we can't trust our police, and we can't trust our politicians. What is the point of voting for politicians these days, like for a Tory party that protects paedophiles? Because that's what it is. Exactly. Because it's like part of it. And also, I mean, 
you did say that there was a really good social worker that worked with you and supported you. You mentioned someone. Surely there are good people. What's happening to the good people? Because, you know, you get good people as well that are working as social I was a residential social worker. And I worked with kids in Parkway in Stoke-on-Trent. And they were coming out of these homes. And I remember how, you know, I remember the cars used to come up and pick up the girls and they go off with them for the grooming. I remember, you know, I was just there at, doing sometimes night duties and there wasn't much you could do. These kids were already, oh, they were a lot older. They were already like 17, 18 year olds coming out of care. But what I'm saying is that I, I didn't know anything in those days. But what I'm saying now, a lot of people know and and so where where are all the whistleblowers where are all the social workers whistleblowers why are they not coming forward why are they not telling the truth about what's going on i mean under the the pressures and the things they've got to do under the guise of of what they've been told to do put these kids in difficult situations where are they alan and why are they not coming forward do you think i'll tell you where why they won't say anything because we had this little thing a while back where whistleblowers, whistleblowers should be allowed we should be able to tell the truth we should be if there's a wrongdoing we should be able to speak about it if there's a wrongdoing in if it's in the national health it's in the police service if it's in the fire service if it's medical or whatever the case might be if it's a politician we should know about it and people should have the free freedom to speak their mind and, and have something to say. But they shut up. They shut up. The, 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 no, no policemen are bad policemen. But their senior officers are the ones closing them down. It's like bosses in companies. They close their workforce down. They say to them that you can't do this, you can't do that. And... Um, And sorry, I, my wife was calling me and, um, okay. you know, uh, and, um, you know, you just, it's, whistleblowers are silenced. They're threatened. They're threatened to have everything. Like John, he was threatened to have his family taken away from him, his home taken away. Him. He was basically told to shut the fuck up. Yeah, I heard. Right, by senior officers, right, for doing something he didn't agree to. Um, if someone tells me to do something, I am going to be more defiant for what I've been through. For the simple reason, I hate bosses or anybody speaking at me. I want them to talk to me. Yes. Yeah, exactly. So, um, coming back to everything we were saying here. We're still living in a world where children are, are a commodity, children are being abused, children are being sold, children are just going through hell, absolutely yeah. hell. And um, it, it's very difficult for someone like myself or anyone else to ask that question is, why is it still going on? Why we, I know why it's still going on. I know why the media are not taking care of it, but would you like to, to tell people? Well, I, I, I'd like to say something on that. Because I, I, I actually personally think now I'm going to give you a prime example of why, right? There's a guy out there, right? I'm not a supporter of this bloke, right? But morally, I support him, right? Maybe. This guy's name's Tommy Robinson. Oh, Tommy. Right. When Tommy Robinson, to me, right, speaks a lot of truth. He tells a lot of things how it is. So what happens with Tommy Robinson is people go after him because they think he's an easy target. They think they can pull him down and there's ways to stop him and they will do anything in their means to try and shut him up and stop him from doing what he's doing. He's doing a good job. He was talking about the grooming gangs in Manchester 10 years ago. The police in Manchester that are responsible and the people that are responsible for those children, part of the establishment, are not doing their job. Mm -hmm. right? Other people are doing their job for them 
by naming these people and these grooming gangs. And okay, because they might be British Muslims, right, that are doing some of this grooming gang and taking our young white girls off our streets, doesn't... See, this is not just happening in Manchester. This is happening in Telford, in Rochdale, in Bognor Regis, in Banbury. It's happening all over the country. Um, you know, they have some different rules and regulations and different uh, cultures to what we have, right? And they can marry young children. So to be able to take off- well, But it happens, but you know, obviously, it's it's nothing to do with race or, or religion as we no. as the women that abused you were ordinary white English they were. women. They were. So yeah, what we, we that said that, that already. We said it's across the board. You know, it doesn't matter what colour creed you are, because yeah. the, the children were the innocent people in Bencham as well, and yeah. they were from different backgrounds and they were abused the same. Exactly. And they were abused exactly the same, so it's the same argument. It's the same argument that we're trying to say now. We were talking about all that's going on. When you asked me a question, I turned around and said, this has been going on for donkey's years. Tommy Robinson has been talking about it. So he's made out to be a guy that goes around picking on a certain race and making it a race-hate thing. We were talking about Black Lives Matter. It's not about race because you look at how many Irish have gone all around the world and how many Irish children were taken down the pits, were in cages and sent all around the world and sold off as slaves. Irish well, they, they, they white like, children. They like to use that in order to divide up. They like to use race and anything they can in order to, um, to divide us and to vilify whoever is actually trying to bring this up to the surface. So, uh, but I want to take you back to Victoria Atkins again that if you were sitting there with her and looking her in the eye, what, what would you want her to actually do now, Alan? I wanted her to do, what I was hoping she would do, what do you want her to was, do? I want her to get, it's awkward when ICSA is a government uh, investigation into child abuse. How can you have a government into, uh, investigation into child abuse when some of the perpetrators are government officials themselves? And you've got, it's got to be some neutral, you know, or level playing field somewhere. It, it can't be about people or well to do people that are in, you know, our judges are involved, our police officers are involved, our politicians are involved, our solicitors are involved, you know, some high profile people are involved. And when you talk about ICSA, these people aren't normal people off the streets. They're people that have got jobs or reshuffled into a position to make it look good. But at the end of the day, what is actually ICSA done in all the investigations it's actually Sorry, what's done? What's ICSA? Sorry, can you tell us what ICSA is? ICSA is the, um, the government body of child investigation. It's the investigation child abuse. So they're... Oh. It's the, I can't think of the, um, the, the full thing, but it's child investigation but of they the government. Need to be held accountable. You see, what you're going to have, we've got people power, and people power is growing, we're growing, we're all joining. This, as I said, wake up, it's a huge awakening. Um, so we're joining, but you're going to have to have some independent. There must be good MPs. There must even John Wedger admits there are some good MPs and uh, good people fighting in your corner. To There's get one good MP out into one, the, one good MP. The public. One. One good MP. What's his name? Nigel Huddleston. Just one. Worcester MP. He's the Worcester. He's the Worcester MP for Worcester, and he's the only person that's got up in the Commons and spoke about Beach Home and said an investigation, a public inquiry should be held into the abuse that went on in Ch into Beach Home. And he was the only person in. And he also went into a select committee meeting, a government, again, we're talking about ICSA, we're talking about government select meetings. We're talking about, it's always high ranking type of top of the tree people. The people are there to safeguard us, that don't actually protect us. My argument always has been, I was placed in harm's way. 
when I was putting Beach home, they had a duty of care for me. They didn't fulfill that duty of care. And it, even under the 1948 agreement under the human rights, they still have agreements, even under EU law, that where they signed up to, that they don't agree, they don't adhere to. Mm. And that's where we don't have any rights as um, sovereign of our own country, if you're going to say. We're, 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 for the people of our own country, we mean, if you went, there's more, there's more in um, the Magna Carta of 1213, 1215 than there is in law today. If you look at our maritime law, there's more common law in maritime law. If you look at some of the maritime rules and regulations, they, have, they come back to, for some reason to maritime law. And, and, and we are fighting a system now that is not fit for purpose. We have a set of rules and regulations that are put to us that we have to agree to. They seem to forget we put politicians in power to work for us, not the other way round. Exactly. It's disgusting, Alan. I mean, I, I have a friend who went through similar. I don't know what homes he was in. He's a lot younger. Um, but I don't know. It's interesting to find out what, actually, what actual homes he was put in. But he was given ten thousand pounds. That was it. To shut him up. You know, that's that's what he was given, and it's actually made him worse. Is it? Do you know? Did you know, Lauren? Take away a, a, a child's a, your whole childhood and give you ten thousand pounds. It is it, just disgusting. You now, if I said to you, I've written to every single politician, right? Labour, Conservative. I've written to every um, councillor at Hammersmith and Fulham Council, Labour and Conservative. I've done exactly the same to Wandsworth, Labour and Conservative. I've written to both mayors at Hammersmith and Fulham and Wandsworth. I've written to the CEOs, the childcare teams, every person that holds any position within the authority within an authority I have written to, right? And I ha do you know what? I have not had one reply. Not one. No. But one reply. It's disgusting. It's disgusting, Alan. As I said, thank God you're getting the support. Uh, you know, we are growing. People power is growing. Whatever they do to us, it's making us stronger. But uh, how, just before we finish, just two things. How are you going to get through to that person that just does not want to know? They just want to keep living their lives. They've got their perfect little lives where their children are being brought up, you know, um, the way they want to bring them up. They, they can't believe anything because they watch the mainstream. And they, how, how are you going to get this across to them when they just don't want to know? They just want to keep their eyes shut and they say, yeah, it's terrible what go on with kids, but they think it's going on in other countries. They don't realize it's on their doorstep. So what would you like to say to them to, to give them that you know, message that they really need to start opening up, to start thinking about that this can't go on anymore. Is there anything else we can do apart from what you're doing and what I'm doing, what John and all, these amazing, amazing people that are coming out and talking about their SRA, which, again, I'm not going to go into this in this program. You know, it, it, it just goes on and on and on. Yeah, I agree. Great, great. It's great. Unbelievable how it goes on and on and on. Um, but just from you to the general public, that if we could wake up one or two people from this program, what would you say to them? How, are you gonna, how would you do it? How would you get right in there? How would you do I think I think the easiest thing to say is if you give up, you're finished. If you lie down, if you if you turn roll over and die or lie down, you're finished. You have to keep going forward. You have to keep believing in that you can do this. I am at this very moment gonna take Hammersmith and Fulham, both councils, I'm gonna take them both to court. Now I'm doing that now in a way that I've managed to get my childcare reports. 
But what I'm doing with them childcare reports is I'm going to turn them childcare reports back on the people who produce them. What they say in them child reports, I'm going to issue them with freedom of information requests to ask them questions about what they wrote, when they wrote it, dates, times, and names of people, right? And the ones that are illegible, I want them to write or type up, not handwritten. Because some of the stuff I've got on my reports is handwritten. Some of it is redacted. I'm going to ask why it is redacted. Why is this person's signature on this name? Who was this person? And what was their role? And are they still in office today? And can you please answer the questions to these? And if they don't do that, <clears throat> I will issue them with another freedom of information. And if they don't answer that, I will take them to court. Good, good. Are you being, are you being lucky enough to be funded or sponsored in any way? Because none of us have got the sponsorship. I mean, I do interviews with Geza, Geza Tarjani, who's going out against the um, experimentation on children. He doesn't get anything. John Wedger doesn't get anything. How do you survive? Do you get donations? Or how are you paying lawyers, for example? Are you bringing so pro bono lawyers? We, we had lawyers for us doing the beach home. And the same as the Surrey Police. The Surrey Police have now turned around and said to me, um, your case is concluded. And I say, well, how can my case be concluded um, if two people are still alive? and you haven't interviewed them, the Gordon Reeds and Ian McLaren, if they're still alive, shouldn't you have gone and questioned them under caution? And they said, well, we can't do that because the only charge, if we could do a charge against them, is actual, actual bodily harm, right? We can't prove, prove give, grievous bodily harm because of time spent. They have an answer for everything and uh, a saying for everything. Those people, right, went on to live a normal life and made other people's lives suffer, right? And the police have a duty of care to fulfil their investigations, which they're not doing. They're not, they're not doing... I mean, why spend millions of pounds on a police investigation? Surely that money that they're spending on that police investigation would have been better off giving it to the survivors and to say, here's a bit of compensation. But what they're doing as well is that politicians are involved in this as well because... As far as Shirley Oaks is concerned, they're saying what we do is we will give the, the survivors that are alive to this day a re-address scheme. We will give them £10,000 each, but nothing's going to go to court. Nothing's yeah. said. No names will be mentioned. Yeah, the whole yeah. thing will be brushed under the carpet, shut up. And worst part about that, Lambeth Borough Council, Lambeth Council went to a Conservative government and borrowed a hundred million pounds to pay the survivors off from Shirley Oaks. Now, if you can pay survivors off from Shirley Oaks, you can pay survivors off from other. If them abusers at Beach Home went to Shirley Oaks, you had a problem at Beach Home. If they put them children in harm's way, they put us in harm's way. Yes, you can't just do it for one and not for anybody else. But it isn't the ten thousand pound. I would turn around and say I don't want it. Of course. The only thing I want is an apology. You want the truth. You want these people to be held accountable for. Exactly. And as you said, we've got Ian McLaren. You said there were two that were still alive. Do you name them and shame them now in front well, of Well, Gordon you? Reed was a uh, house mother, <coughs> house father of Ash Cottage in Beach Home in the 1960s. <coughs> 1960s, 19, yeah, late 1960s. Right. Uh, Ian McClellan was oh, in Larch in the earlier part or mid part of the 1960s in Larch Cottage. Okay. Um, those are the only two that I know that are alive to this day. Um, okay. But the police won't do anything about them. They're not even interviewing them. Where do they live? Are they in... in I don't know. They, they wouldn't tell they me. Are? They wouldn't tell me where they live. They, they know who they are. They know where they are. Okay. But they, it, they're saying to me, it's my word against theirs. Right. right. Well, you're a force that I, you know, to reckon with. And you've got God or God is love to me working with you. So now I just want you to... Although I don't believe in it, Lauren. 
Sorry? Although I don't believe in it. I know. It's very... Because in Beach Home, they forced us to go to church twice on a Sunday. Yeah. And they dressed you up in your Sunday best, as they called it, and made you dress up to go to church. And when I was being abused and beaten and tortured, and I was calling out for someone to help me, where was my God then? Yeah. I'm not talking about a religious God. I, to me, God is what keeps you going. To me, it's, it's inside of you and it's what keeps you going because I don't believe in a religious God either. And I, but that's a big subject. But what I'm saying is you have a really, really strong spirit. There's something inside you that brought you through all of this, Alan. And I get a lot of that. It's strange that it's almost like people can see something in me. I don't know what it is. And I, don't know. <laughs> yeah. I just think I'm a common, uh, uh, just like an uneducated, Joe Average. Uh, I don't even think I come across that well. Well, the interview you've done has been very accurate, very clear. You've given us your heart and soul today. And, you know, I'm going to go out there and I'm going to send it everywhere. But again, before you go, I want you to shame every single person that hurt you as a child and possibly your family in any way. So you can say that now to everyone who watches it, each name, we shame them. So whatever happens with them, whether they're alive or dead, we know, we know. And, and, and I know that's not going to give you your child back and it's not going to give you what you deserve, but at least it's a start. It's a start. So shall we and do you know why I think one of the worst offenders of it all is? And I will name him. It's a guy called Paul Martin, who's the CEO of Ones of Council, who won't even engage with survivors to this day uh, about Beecher. <clears throat> Instead of sitting at a desk in Paul his office... Paul Martin. Paul Martin is the CEO. Thank you. So of uh, Ones of Council. Shaming. We're shaming them all. Victoria Atkins. He, he won't do nothing. Um, you, you can... You can if you said, you, it doesn't take a lot to work out, you can go on the web and you can look up all the politicians' names that are Conservative councillors at Hammersmith, Conservative councillors, Labour councillors at Hammersmith, the same at Wandsworth, you can go onto the internet, names are there for their constituencies. <coughs> Sorry. And uh, okay. I'm getting a with my throat. And uh, they're, they're, they're there, they're there, like the mayor of Hammersmith. I went to Hammersmith. I went there in person. And they tried to throw me off the building premises. I said, I'm not going outside. It's cold outside. I said, I have every right to be in a public building. And all I want to do is give an interim report to either the CEO or one of the council representatives like the children's services or the in-touch team, as it is called at Hammersmith. Okay. But ones of council, I think, find that they are disgraceful. It's like... Okay, what we're going to do at the end of the programme on the titles is we're going to put the names of these people that are not helping you and shaming you. So they'll literally go, people can see them in their face at the end of this programme. But I've got to end there... Alan, but before I end, is there anything else that we can help you with? How do people get in touch with you? Or is there anything else that you'd like? I've got a Facebook page and it's got my name on it. Look, Alan Merritt. Alan and Merritt, it's... Justice for Children. Yeah, yeah it was Justice for Beach Home Survivors. Beach Home Survivors. Okay, we can see. Oh, that. I don't know if you can see that. The B is missing. <laughs> We've been just about So to... You've got to remember, Beach Home, beach home is spelled like in beach with two E's. And home, Beach Home. So you've got the H for beach and the H for home. So you've got two E's and two H's in it. So if you look up beach home, Google beach home, spelt like that. And there's lots and lots and lots on beach home. There's um, <clears throat> Facebook, go on Facebook. <coughs> if you go on Google and type in beach home, you can find videos. And if you type in wake up UK, you can see all my shows. Okay. And also, if you type in John Wedger, 
on um, YouTube, you'll find a lot of my videos with John Wedger. Okay. And so is there anything else that you feel we can do to help you or the public can do in any way to stop this? Because as I said, I see it coming to an end. We see the drain being swamped in America. Thank God. We see this every single day. Massive amount of stuff about paedophilia and sex slavery and everything coming to the surface for the public. They can't run away from it anymore. Now you and I and, and, and people like us that went through it, we live it every day. It's affected our lives in every single way. But those people that don't want to look at it anymore, it's going to become impossible for them to run away from it. It's getting so big. And, um, and as I say... The only thing I would say to you on that is that I pay for everything myself. Everything I do, I'm not a charity. I haven't got a registered charity. Um, I wouldn't know how to go about it because I haven't got the intelligence. Uh, I'd rather to become a charity. Don't, I wouldn't go there. I'm, I know. And, uh, everything I do, I fund out of my own pocket for everywhere I go, everything I do, anything I do to try to help people. The T-shirts I buy, the, the, the badges I make. These badges that I've made, I've gone global. They're in five or six different languages now. And the Portuguese, the Italians and the French are going absolutely mad for them. And, and there's an order for 50 just come in for these badges to be made. And they're all done in the different languages. So... How can you fail with all of this? You're, you're, you're amazing. So can but, you actually buy... I've, I've, I've got the, the, the Crocodile T-shirt. I've got a, 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 a new T-shirt that I've made. I designed with right. the crocodile on it and can we're can they buy them <coughs> you can yeah buy them from you what by contacting you on facebook yeah if you contact me on facebook or messenger right um and then you look on the beach home survivors page <coughs> everything's on there fantastic so uh, again i i am thank you for such an incredible incredible interview maybe we'll have a follow-up because there's so much. I know you've got so much that you need to say and, and it's all coming from here and your, your incredible love for, for people and your passion for humanity makes you a very, very special human that I'm, I'm actually very humble to be sitting here talking to you, telling your story. And uh, it really makes me feel that we're going to be okay because with people like you, Alan, and, and other people that are doing this work, we have to win. There's no choice, we have to win. And we will, and we are, we are winning. And to me, that's, that's the power. I don't say the word God, I say love. To me, the power of love, um, that's inside you. That's uh, why we came together here in order to create this program. So, yeah, and I would say that to you I as well. Thank you. Why aren't people like me asked to go and speak at universities, at colleges, at um, Bernardo's, at government inquiries, or for government bodies? Why don't they listen to real people, to survivors, that if you put a poll out there and you said, like, you've got all of these people going to put their name down for parliamentary, parliamentary election, and you've got this guy here, right, who's been a survivor through horrific crimes that's been done to him and others. We need them people to speak for us from, it's no good being a wealthy politician that you, you've had 11 prime ministers in this country that have all gone through Eton. What happened at Eton? Child abuse, was, the, the abuse was rife in Eton. And so, do they know anything better? And 11 of our prime ministers I've been in abusive situations. Yeah. That's why abuse is not, nothing done about abuse today. You've got 11 prime ministers that have been in abusive situations. You've had their colleagues that work with them, alongside them, that have got away with murder and the stories and the things that are told and the cover up of everything. It's, it's just, they're all implicit. If you're in power, you're implicit. You're part of the problem. But now they're falling. I, I like to end with moving on TV. I like to give people hope. 
it's about the solutions. So you are creating the solutions. You're not sitting around not doing anything. You're continuously working, but you need to take care of yourself. You need to go and eat. I need to go and eat. <laughs> you need to stay well and do your best to stay strong and healthy, regardless of everything. And um, as I said, we do our best uh, to stand up for innocence and we are changing the world. You're changing the world and it's becoming a huge, huge movement. And nothing will shut us up, nothing. Nothing will shut us up because as I said, babies, children, innocence, um, I didn't have any, I couldn't have children. They wouldn't let me adopt, you see? So I could have saved one of those kids and I wasn't allowed to because of the system. So I go out there now and I do whatever I can to put out this message. Um, because as I said, innocent children, they're given to us, we are their guardians. Not that just our parents, we are their guardians. If their parents can't do it, then it's up to us to do it, to protect them, to make sure that they are allowed to grow up. Like, I, I grew up in wars as well, wars and terrorism and all sorts. Again, children aren't, shouldn't have to grow up like this. So you and I and all of us together, we're putting an end to it. And we're, we're asking that innocence is, is kept the way it is, so that you, a, a child like you, a child like me, we can grow up with love and compassion, like my husband did. He grew up in a very compassionate, loving atmosphere where he was protected from all of this. And, and that's all we can do now. So I'm going to have to end there and say um, thank you for everything you've said. That's been absolutely beautiful. And I'm, I will do my best to get this out as soon as I can. So people can contact you through us, I suppose, or on Facebook. Um, what's the main site? Do you have a website? I don't have a website, no. I've never uh, got into that, but uh, I'm on Facebook. So just type Alan Merritt. And remember, it's spelled the way it's spelled. It's, it's strange because, like even Beach Home, my name's got uh, two R's in it and two T's in it. Right, okay, interesting, as you can see. Don't put in the elephant man, the Merrick. Elephant man. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right, he was the elephant man. And uh, so you've got your hashtag, but isn't it wonderful that people have got somewhere to go now? So, you know. You know, you can only do so much and you can, you can only say as much. You cannot put yourself into someone else's shoes. And that's why I called my show Behind Closed Doors because it's poignant in the fact in itself that you know if a relationship goes wrong you can't interfere you can't tell somebody else how their life works and how to run their life and what to do within their life mm. i was that victim behind closed doors i was that survivor behind closed doors if anybody can tell a story i was behind them closed doors it's always behind closed doors Oh, I mean, just, just something came into my mind here. I have to ask you before we go. Chai-Line. How do you feel about Chai-Line? That line that right. could ring up and, and say that things were happening to them. Waste of space. Waste of space. Right. Okay. Not fit for the purpose it's meant for. It's oh. a money-making, ridiculous idea that somebody's got very rich off the back of. Right. But now people, now kids know, people know they can contact you, they can contact other sources like John Wedger, they can contact Moving On TV, uh, and they can get a voice, a long laugh, they can get a voice. And but it shouldn't be down to, Lauren, it shouldn't be down to the likes of myself and John Wedger. They, this should be set in concrete. This should be part of what we are. You know, if we're gonna be human beings, um, preserve the human race we've got to treat them a little bit better than what we do of course we're taking them down alan bit by bit we're taking them down lots of thank you ever so much i'm going to end on that we're taking them down people are waking up all over the place and this is going to be biblical as they say as i say i'm using that word without religion because i know how you feel about that and i know how i feel but you take care, sweetheart, and thank you for your, for your um, courage and everything. And, you know, we're always here for you if you want to get back to us. I'm going to end the program there.
Thank you so much, Alan Merritt. Thank you very much indeed. You know how you can get in touch with Alan on Facebook. You know, if any one of you is going through anything, if you're a child or you're a survivor, you have now got support. You've got a voice. You, you don't have to just pick up the phone and ring the Samaritans. You can go to people that are actually fighting for you. And that is incredible. That makes me feel very, very excited and powerful. And I know that we're winning. So take care. Lots of love to all of you. Please contact me at movingontv1 at gmail.com if you too want to come on here and tell your story. Um, that's all we're here for. Lots of love. Bye. Wow. What a brave man. What an incredible man. Children are innocent. Children are innocent. Children are innocent. If you are a survivor, you are innocent. If you are watching this and you're a good person and you don't go on and carry on this pattern, you, all of you, you're innocent and you can get the help now. As Alan said, do not ring child line. A waste of time and it's run by that lot. You're not going to get anywhere. They'll probably put you in danger. We have named you people, you evil, disgusting people that do what you do to children. I'm, I will name the dentist that molested me. His name was Rosencrantz and he lived next door to us. I, he's dead. He's gone. There's nothing much I can do about it. That's why I go out there and I fight for you for the children, for survivors, me and Alan and John, all of us together. You are not to blame, children are not to blame. The minute you realize that you get told, you get peace. So if you're a child or you're an adult that cannot figure this stuff out, that has become an addict of some kind, that is suffering so much, please, Try to face what happened to you. And if you can't do it alone, contact me, contact Alan, contact John Wager. These people are there for you now. Or get a nice therapist, someone who will help you. Or just go out there and do what we do and help release innocent children. Because it's still going on. And I'm ending with solutions here. We love you. Namaste. And as I say, please use discernment when you watch this. And my heart goes out to every single survivor out there. I love you. I'm one of you. And we are winning. God bless. Bringing the hope and glory back into our lives. Goodbye.
Of your face. 